Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I want to talk to you about Twingate, a VPN replacement. Traditional VPNs are terrible for modern corporate networks and lack the principles of zero trust network architecture. Today's corporate work environment includes highly distributed remote workers and corporate resources that are continuously moving. But most corporate network infrastructure doesn't sufficiently support this environment. I'm sure you can call on personal experience where you've been working remotely, connected to your corporate VPN network, accessing a tool like Jira or something similar, and have been faced with slow, painful performance while accessing that resource. Twingate is a replacement for the traditional VPN that we know and loathe. It's a modern VPN built on zero trust network architecture principles and allows you to effortlessly establish secure, direct connections to resources that are behind a NAT using NAT traversal. Setup of your Twingate network is simple. After mapping resources onto your Twingate network and assigning access to your teams, you can connect to those resources from any device anywhere in the world. Let's take a closer look at how Twingate works and why it's better than a traditional VPN. Before I talk about the Twingate architecture, let's first do a quick recap on traditional VPN architecture. Clients who want to access a company resource while not connected to the corporate network will need to connect and authenticate with a VPN gateway, which will establish a secure tunnel into the corporate network. Once connected, the client has free reign in the corporate network and has access to any resource that they would have if they were physically connected to the network. But there's several issues with this architecture. The resource being accessed by the client might not be geographically co-located with the VPN gateway which can cause a noticeable hit to the performance of the connection. To give you sort of an extreme example, imagine that the client and the resource that they're trying to access are located in the US while the VPN gateway is located in Europe. You can imagine that this would cause a noticeable difference in the latency of the connection. Another issue with this architecture is that if the remote user is compromised, the attack surface is much broader than if they had access to only the resource that they needed to access on the corporate network. As I mentioned before, once they authenticate uh, with the VPN gateway, they have access to any resource that they would typically have while physically connected to the corporate network. One method of mitigating the problem where the resource is not co-located with the VPN gateway in the same region as the VPN gateway is adding additional VPN gateways in more regions that are closer to not only the resources that clients need access to, but also to the clients as well. Some cloud platforms actually offer this as a service uh, so that you can kind of dynamically add VPN gateways, and they call these VPN gateways points of presence. However, a lot of vendors don't have a large POP footprint, so the performance is really dependent on how distributed the customer's clients and resources are. Point of presence vendors are often difficult to integrate into a corporate environment, and they might not work for all protocols. For instance, your client might be a developer who's trying to clone a repository over SSH from a private uh, GitHub or GitLab instance. And if the pop vendor doesn't support SSH, this won't be possible. Now that we understand the traditional VPN architecture, let's take a look at Twingate's architecture. What if instead of placing a pop in various geographic locations, we place the pop on every node in the network, including client and resource nodes? This type of network is a peer-to-peer -peer network where clients are directly connected to the resources that they need to access. Twingate is a platform that supports this highly distributed network architecture. Twingate incorporates the principles of zero trust network architecture and is logically separated into three layers. The first layer is the network layer. The network layer is the set of all resources and clients that can connect to each other. And these resources and clients can be located on any network and any geography. It's also important to note that no resource or client needs to be exposed to the public internet, like VPN gateways and POPs are. The second layer is the transport layer. The transport layer helps establish an end-to-end -end encrypted direct connection between a client and a resource. And it also acts as a backup relay mechanism in the event that a direct connection cannot be established between two nodes on the network. And finally, we have the control layer. The control layer defines policies via a web-based admin console or admin API. These policies are sent to all nodes on the network and enforced locally on each node. 
It also interfaces with identity authorities like Okta to enforce user authentication. One of the key benefits of the TwinGate architecture that you might have already guessed is the fact that we're removing intermediary nodes. In the traditional VPN architecture, an intermediary node would have been the VPN gateway. Additionally, route selection from a client to a resource is executed locally, thereby optimizing connectivity performance. TwinGate also utilizes the Quick Transport Layer Protocol, which provides additional optimizations that make secured TwinGate connections faster than a traditional VPN. TwinGate also provides split tunneling by default, which essentially allows a client to maintain a secure connection to a resource while simultaneously connected to resources on uncontrolled networks, thereby reducing the amount of congestion on the corporate network. For example, you might be working on your company's a private instance of Jira, which should utilize a secure connection, but at the same time connecting to resources on the public internet such as Docker Hub or GitHub. Connecting to these resources that are on the public internet via the same secured connection you're using to connect to your private instance of Jira is unnecessarily consuming bandwidth on your corporate network, thereby impacting the performance of all clients on the network. I hope you enjoyed this high-level overview of the TwinGate architecture. And if you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. And let me know if you'd like to see a demonstration of TwinGate in action. Thanks for watching.